All right, Coach, why don't you just get us started and just you know, kind of rehash the last game, and then let's you know, talk about UMass a little bit. Yeah, not often do I feel much different after I watch a tape than I feel after a game. I would say I feel a little different when I rewatch the tape Saturday night. Um, obviously, credit to Akron in the first half. I'm not taking anything away from Akron's defense or Akron's offense. They made plays uh, offensively. They had three, three long passes over our heads uh, that directly got them in scoring position and, and created points. They blocked us up enough up front to have a pretty solid running game in the first half and, and gain a lot of yards in the first half. Um, we definitely got a little frazzled defensively and, and started guessing when we got down in the first half and gave them some, you know, their last score after our fumble, we went out there to try to make a play and that's never a good idea. The idea is to run your defense and then try to make a play, not just go try to make a play. Then obviously offensively, the turnover uh, is 21-7. We're still right in the game. Trying to get to halftime, we know we got the ball. We're backed up. We know we got the ball to start the second half. So if you, if you don't be too aggressive there and you get to half at 21-7, you got the ball. If you can score at 21-14, it's just a normal football game at that point. Obviously, we fumble when we're trying to get to half. Uh, and then we don't play very good defense. They punch it in. And then we had another time that we fumbled when we were down where we could have at least got points on the board and we fumble. So special teams, we get a 60 yard return negated in the first half. So you get there at halftime, you're looking at the guys like guys, it's a total team effort, offense, defense, special teams, not playing uh, the way you're capable of playing. And again, not, I don't know lack of effort. We were playing hard. We just weren't playing smart football and we had played smart football for about three straight weeks. And we hadn't played as smart in the first half. I really felt at halftime, even though it was 27-7, we still had a great chance to win. That's my whole halftime was talking to kids about, like, physically I'm watching the game. It's a fair fight. We need to put, if we play better, I think we'll, we'll get right back in the game. We knew we had the ball first. We talked about it. just get it to 27-14. And then even then, it's a pretty normal football game. Down two scores in college football is not that big a deal. We returned the opening kickoff for a touchdown, but we clip again. Uh, and... Okay, could have been 27-14. Then the next play, we throw a pick, and 50 seconds in the second half, it's 34 to seven. Uh, so much for get it to two scores, and you know, even then we were imploring the troops, like a lot of time left. There's still 29 minutes left. <laughs> I know that was a bad first minute, um, but so we settle in. We Roe makes a big play on the pass from Billy. Okay, it's 34-14. It gives us a little life. Our defense settles back in. It starts playing the defense the way we're supposed to play. Uh, we start stuffing the run. We start defending the passes way better than we defend them in the first half. We hang in there. Uh, finally, we get the we get them pinned back up. We drive down, have a chance to score. We don't punch it in. It seems like all hope is lost. It's 34-14. We can't get in from the one. Uh, very frustrating. But like we talk about, that's when we know we'll be a good team is when we don't get stuffed on the goal line. But then we pin them again, and we get the punt block, and now it's 34-21. All right. Then we pin them again. We get them to now they know they can't run, so we go back to playing more pass defense. We get a pick six, and it's we're right back in it. We get another stop, and we got the ball with 638 left, and we got the ball down six, and who to thunk it, you know? So obviously very proud, excited, a lot of great things in the second half, offense, defense, and special teams after that first minute where we really a 14-point swing in the first minute with the special teams blunder and a offensive blunder. It says seven for us. They get seven, which obviously is critical. But we still got the ball at 638 with a chance. And we don't get it. We punt. We shank a punt. They get a short field. They get a couple first downs. Kid makes a 50-yard field goal. And, and we're probably out of it at that point. But uh, obviously, very good comeback. Kids still competing. Kids playing hard. We played much better defensively. We moved the ball much <coughs> better in the second half offensively, although we got down there and got stuffed when we had a chance to get seven. Um, but. We turned around and pinned him and blocked the punts. We got it right back where we where we started there. So a lot of great things in the second half, but again, not not playing fundamental sound football, not playing smart football in the first half, puts you down twenty seven to seven. Then the first minute of the second half is a continuation and you're down thirty four to seven and then you fight and scratch and claw and you get way all the way back to where you legitimately have a chance with plenty of time left to drive and win a game and uh, we don't get it done. Questions? Um, you said you felt different after watching the tape and you usually don't feel that way. Does that mean it wasn't as bad as you first thought? Um, I think I think there was 
I was very disappointed at the game and felt like that there was a lot of self-inflicted wounds, which I still feel like there was. I think, you know, I have to give a little more credit to Akron in the first half because they did that. You know, one was a fantastic diving catch. You know, they did some things to block us up pretty good. They obviously did some things defensively. I think I felt like we moved the ball more in the first half than we did after I rewatched the tape. So I, I'm still disappointed, and I still we didn't play well, but I still think I felt like more we handed them the game, and I felt like after I watched the tape, they really did outplay us in the first half. Not that we shouldn't have played better, but and then I felt like we really outplayed them in the second half, where I felt like I think after the game, I thought was more of just a comedy of errors in the first half and didn't really feel like that they had made as many plays. But then when I watched it, I'm like, they did make some pretty solid plays. So it wasn't not taken away from our errors, but more, hey, they, they did hand it to us pretty good in the first half. You know, I felt more that we handed it to them, but they, they got after us pretty good and, and blocked us up more than I thought they did. And so to me, that was that's kind of how I felt differently after I watched the tape. And Saturday you said there's some athletes who just aren't mentally tough enough yet to play a D1 sport. I mean, when you're watching, it's sometimes it's like taking one step forward, two steps back, offense finally moving the ball, defense getting the stops. Then there's these huge costly errors. Yes. So. The mental toughness part of that, I mean, how do you solve that? Um, keep, keep learning hard lessons and then keep, keep correcting the mistakes and then keep recruiting. <laughs> to, if, if, but again, there's, there's kids that come out, you know, just for instance, like our two young quarterbacks, right? They do a lot of good things, but they also do some, you know, it's like somebody asked me at the game, well, do you, think, do you think they'll ever learn or do you think Billy will ever learn? I'm like, well, one time will tell. I don't have that answer. There's quarterbacks that, again, as Achilles Hill said, it was twice under duress. He threw the ball to the other team. He didn't throw the ball to the other team one time. When it was clean and he was protected, he looked pretty darn good. And when it was clean and protected, but you're not always going to be clean and protected. So the quarterbacks that don't figure it out, they end up not being quarterbacks. But I've also been around, you know, somebody says, do you think, do you think he'll ever learn when he's under pressure not to throw the ball to the other team? I said, well, I don't know. We're going to find out. But I've had, you know, I had a kid named Colin Finnerty that early in his career threw nine picks in two games, and three of them were returned for touchdown, and they were the two biggest games of the year, and we lost both of them. And he wasn't directly responsible for the losses, but nine picks, you know, one game we lost by seven, the other game we lost by 10, and three of his nine picks were returned for touchdowns in very close losses. So, but he was young, and he tried to do too much, and he never wanted to give a play away. So when it wasn't there, he always forced the issue. And nine, we played good teams, and nine times they took the ball from us. And they were tough, tough losses. And then he did figure it out. He stopped throwing interceptions, and he threw a crazy amount of touchdowns. The rest, he still had three years left in his career, and he threw a bunch of touchdowns and had a great career. But he figured out that I, I may not win the game this time, but I certainly could lose it because he lost us. you know. And that's, that's where we are, particularly with Billy, of – Right now, he's starting to see a lot more. Right now, he's getting more comfortable. He's becoming more accurate every week because he is accurate. He just he wasn't accurate early when we put him in there because he was nervous and he was he didn't. Now he's seeing more and feeling more. And when he drops back and we have time and there's guys open, he's he's making a lot of throws for us, short, intermediate, and we got a short passing game going. We're you know, and it's it's going. But now, okay, there's four or five snaps every week that somebody's going to be in your face, and what happens? Right now, what happens and what's happened all the way back to Wisconsin when somebody gets in his face is he tries to make a play. He's competitive. He has a lot of belief in his ability. So he tries to make a play. And what's happened all the way back to Wisconsin is it costs our football team doing. And that's part of that position. And if he doesn't grow out of it, then <laughs> he, he won't be our quarterback. It's that simple. If he does grow out, there's, there's still tons. Of, even Saturday, there's tons of positives to his game. But obviously, those when you're getting draped from behind, dragged down, throw the ball to bounds, you don't try to make a play and throw a hook shot over your head. And then another time you're scrambling, there's a guy running and you try to make a play in the double coverage. And that's, you know, that's not going to work, particularly at this level. And then just the other mental mistakes. So we've done so good kickoff return lately. We stopped the penalties and we got the right returner back there. And we're starting to block guys on Saturday. We cost us, you know, 160 yards on two clips from guys that have been on that team all year and one was a young guy, one was an older guy, it doesn't but that's the mental toughness. Like you can't you can't get in that position, clip them. You gotta you gotta pull off that block, you know. And and maybe we don't have a six yard return or touchdown, but we'd like to find out. We know if you clip them you have no chance the ball's on our eight yard line. 
you know, and it sets the course of events to be unprotected and <laughs> throw a pick, and all of a sudden we just, you know, we said it, you know, on Sunday, if, if, if the four drives we turn the ball over, we just punt, we win the game. We could punt on first down, we win the game. You know, and that's, those are still, and you want kids to be competitive, we're trying to make more plays, and we're, we're, we're still in figure it out mode of when to push to make a play. And we got DBs in the first half that are too scared and playing tentatively and not attacking. The same DBs in the second half are batting balls down against the same plays. Same plays, same coverage, same plays because, but then you have another kid that's overzealous trying to make a play all the time, you know. So the balance becomes, and I, it, well, how do you figure out? Well, great players figure it out. Great players aren't just physically great, they're mentally great too. The kid that never figures out how to be aggressive, when to be aggressive versus when to back off is the guy that continues to get to beat, and that's, that's sports. There's a time to push, there's a time not to push, and each position's got to figure out how to do that. And we, have, we still have both ends, people pushing too hard and people not pushing enough. So <coughs> the nice thing, again, Saturday is they did regroup, we didn't fold our tent, and we had some kids that played disaster first half and played really good second half, same kids. Which, is, which was huge, and again, a huge builder for their confidence. Again, just you got to play that way all the time, and you got to be on your toes all the time. You can't be back on your heels, and you know, so. And then we had kids, you know, like Billy did, push, push too hard at times, and he's got to learn, but still made a bunch of plays. Even after he pushed, he comes right back and hits Rowe for a big one, comes back and hits Ryan Smith for another touchdown. And, you know, so it's not, they're not folding their tent when we're going through it. Just, again, it's frustrating for all of us, but that's, that's where we're at. It's a pretty lengthy injury list after Saturday's yeah, games. Where do we stand on that? Uh, Gus done for the year. Uh, Leonard Ross is still done for the year. Um, Sam Martin done for the year. Buke's going to be fine. Um, he was just a little dehydrated. He's actually he's, he's fine right now. Uh, Bucci and TJ yet to be determined. I think there's definitely a chance they could play. But I think I think it's like they're not even telling me. They're just like there's there's a chance on by Saturday, but it's a wait and see and just see how they progress. Really, the next 24, 48 hours, we'll probably know by Wednesday or Thursday how they're progressing with their injuries. But so we lost five, which is a bad day, you know. So and that's particularly it was the Gus loss was tough because we were gaining momentum in the game and Gus was kind of getting his feet underneath them and he was in position where he was going to probably play the rest of the game. We kind of the one drive was pretty damn good, and he was you could tell his confidence. I'm not saying we wouldn't use Billy at all, but with what they were doing and what their strengths were and what Gus was bringing to the table, that was as you look at the stats, that was our run game. Is when we had Gus out there and we could have the the run pass option or the zone read power read options was giving us a way to have a run game against him as opposed to. So it's oh you know when you have two guys that are both playing pretty decent. It hurts to lose one of them, but really the the way Akron is defensively, Gus was going to give us a much better chance. We'd have loved to have him out there with six forty, just and he had his head up and he was and I, and I know Billy threw two touchdowns in the second half too, so it wasn't like we felt like oh, if, but just Gus was Gus was causing them some issues in the things and he continues to throw the ball better and continues just like Billy, he continues to get more comfortable out there. He looks way different than the kid who was at Kent State or the kid that was at. Western Kentucky, and it's just it's game reps, and and then he was making some plays, um, which was his confidence. You could tell his confidence was kind of growing, and we were getting some looks we really liked with him on the field to run and pass. So he was, so that that was, and then obviously Sam's been playing great, so losing him in the first half, you know, bad play, points on the board, fumble, fumble inside the thirty, and you lose one of your one of your better weapons. But that's, you know, again. We're 34 to seven. Got all those guys out. We get to 34 20. Have like that's you understand? Like that's why I say, God. Sometimes I feel like we're so close, and sometimes I feel like we're so far away. And I don't feel again. I don't feel like so close necessarily to the top four in this league, but I feel so close to the other the other nine. But then other times I feel like God. You watch the first half, you're like God. We're not that close. But then you watch second, I was like, Ah, yeah, we are that. Like just consistency and mental toughness and, and understanding. And then just some is just experience. You know, just growing up. As you watch some of the young kids keep getting better and better every week, and you got it on Sunday, I got to talk myself off the ledge and just say, hey, because I watch, I see them, the same young kids that played, did some really bad things that really caught, you know, could say cost us a game. They still came, battled back, and made some plays that got us back in the game, you know? And you're just like, okay, they're, they're just, they're just inexperienced and they're learning, but they keep competing, which is obviously the positive, positive part of it. So if, 
Gus is done, um, are you going to rotate Drew at all? Yeah, we'll see. I don't. Th I don't think we'll plan on rotating. I think yeah. Billy will play, but I think obviously Coom. We put Coom in Saturday for the two-minute deal because, again, his experience in our offense and his ability to two-minute. You're going to have to make some checks at quarterback, and you know, it's it's kind of even with Gus, Billy, Billy, and Coomer have been taking all our two-minute drills. It's not really Gus's shtick at this point in his career. Uh, so to go with the older guy that if they. Or even if they pressured us, get us out of bad play, Drew's probably more capable at this point than the two freshmen. So that's, we've always been practicing them on Thursdays in two minutes just because we think that's still a, you know, because I've told him, I said, you're going to go in if, if the situation's right to win a game at the end because you still give us, in my opinion, the best chance to win. So, and I thought he did a nice drive. We took a sack there late, which was frustrating because that's why I had him in there not to take that sack. But he did a nice job. He had a chance. He almost got Gardner if we, you know, if we, if we don't take the sack, we got a very manageable field goal. We still got a chance to run outside and a chance to win the game. So we still felt like we were hanging at that point. What's the Massachusetts scouting report? Um, they go fast on offense, which is causing some teams some problems. Obviously, Fronapple, we saw firsthand last year in the first half how potent he can be. 6'6", six, six, really accurate. With tons of experience, you know, six-year senior, whatever he is, he's been there been in college football for a long time. Um, and then the Sharp kids, you know, really good. He's going to play in the NFL. I mean, he's a very talented, long, fast, body control, athletic, makes the game look really easy, 99 catches. And uh, he's, he's a very, very talented kid. Uh, they got a couple nice running backs. They got some big boys up front. They got a really hybrid tight end who's really a receiver, but they play him at tight end based on size. But if they move him all over, backfield flex him out. So they got some other weapons outside. So and then defensively, uh, they're definitely better than they were a year ago. Uh, they got almost I think like nine starters returning, so they should be better. Um, and playing, they played a lot more low scoring last year. It was all shootouts. Now they're playing more normal low scoring games. But um, obviously, gotta gotta not let them do to us what they did in the first half last year, where they just went up and down the field on us. And uh, gotta gotta play very well defensively, and then. Offensively, just kind of keep moving forward, and I think better chance to run the ball uh, than we did last week against Akron. So obviously, not having Gus will take a little bit away from that arsenal, but I still think we'll have a chance to be more balanced on offense. Everybody good? Good, appreciate it. All right, thank you.